That was a very, very foggy start to the day. It, it's cleared up though, so this is good. Two days ago we had snow. Snow. Bunch of things to do today. I've gotta to ship off a couple of sanding blocks, but I wanted to show you, I wanna show you and talk to you a little bit about, and answer some questions about this super fandangled little work rest that we have here. So the last video I uploaded, I think it was the last one I uploaded, was basically making this little tooling arm thing, and then obviously, Normally we'll have uh, like an actual work rest in here. You can see this was that big one that I had. I trimmed it up, cleaned it up, made it look a little bit better. There's the relief you can see on the backside there. Phenomenal, just phenomenal the amount of adjustability and the way that you can set this angle. Right now, what I've actually done, let me show you this. I'm really excited about this. And this was actually one of the original reasons that I wanted to do this thing. I went and picked up a Tormek knife what they call it a knife jig. So this is basically the holder that holds the knife. Now I made one of these similar to this a long time ago and actually gave it away with that other knife sharpening base that I made for my paper wheels. Um, I just gave it to a gentleman local here and I didn't want to make this whole thing again and I thought, you know what, I think this was, it was actually, I was surprised how expensive this was. This was 55 bucks Canadian, which is, let's figure it out. Five, five, CAD, two USD. 40 bucks. What I'm doing with this now is obviously clamping the blade. Come on camera, you can do it. Clamping the blade in this jig, in this guide, and then I can use it like this for sharpening. And I've tested out a few knives. It is looking very, very promising. So here, here's a knife that didn't go well. And so, you know, I was actually just messing around with the adjustable table on there and trying to do like, like an upper swedge. This hasn't been heat treated yet. But if you look at how nice and even that edge is, that, that sharpening that we've done, I like that. Obviously this was left fairly thick as well, but just look at that secondary bevel. So this is like an experiment. A lot of times when I have knives that just don't work out, they turn into these things like experimental pieces of crap. Uh, this was like a bluing. The first time I tried bluing was on this thing. I should actually heat treat it so I can, my experiment's a little more realistic, but I, I'll just try weird grinds and stuff. And I've got a lot of these junk knives just just laying around the shop and uh, they're kind of nice to have so that's what i did with this i thought let's just see see how well this works and i just really you look how even that is that is a nice even consistent bevel and like i say just here let me just go grab this thing and the thing that, that's got me really excited about this is that this will do really thin little knives and then it'll also do big knives so this is quarter inch stock Slap it in there, tighten this knob first, use this little kind of a jacking screw, see so there's our connection point. This is just a jacking screw and it puts force onto the blade, holding it really nice and tight. And then I, I ended up moving this arm up. Usually when I'm grinding, we're in a configuration where it goes down, kind of like a V, but we kind of come up this way. I'm actually grinding like this. So, so that's the setup right there, you see that? Like that's pretty sweet, isn't it? Come on, camera. Get the program. Right? Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. Sharpen it up. Flip it over. Sharpen it up. That is a okay in my books. I think I think this is gonna be awesome. Small knives and, and knives that have a lot of curve. I tried I've tried sharpening a whole bunch of scrap knives yesterday. The angle changes so much. So we've got a nice gradual, I think that's probably around 20 degrees, but by the time we get over this way, we're probably at like 30 degrees for our secondary bevel. And I mean it's sharp, it does work. This is super sharp, but it doesn't look good. I like I like that bevel to be fairly consistent. That secondary bevel, you can see it's a lot a lot fatter right here than it is at the tip. Yeah, smaller knives not so much. Something like this. This was our simple life build along. It would be fantastic for that blade. And then I also tried some kitchen knives yesterday and the one thing it's not the greatest for is long kitchen knives just because of the fact you're holding them one spot and by the time you're bringing it around like this you know, if there's flex in there, it's gonna change the angle. And then all of my kitchen knives, like I was using my Wustoffs on this, you know, they all have flex, and so you get that deflection, and it just didn't work that good. But for EDC type stuff, man, I think this is gonna be really, really phenomenal.
All right, so that's kind of how I plan on using this for sharpening, you know, just stick it on here. I'm gonna be standing over here like this, back and forth. Really, really excited about this. This works really, really good. One question a lot of people are asking is how rigid is this thing? Um, obviously, I've got a big bar on here. There's a little movement in that, but you know, when you're sharpening, there's no force. It's not like I'm standing here pushing into it or anything like that. That would happen when you're grinding, but even when you're grinding, not quite so much. So uh, let's just take this bar out of here. I'm gonna actually cut this down once I figure out what the final length should be. So the cost for me for this project, like honestly with the material that I have here, I think we're about like, it's less than $30 Canadian in material. So I don't know, I'm not going to the computer this time, but it's probably like 25 bucks American. So it's really not all that much material. And it's actually a really, really easy project. You know, it's basically just drilling holes. You know, we've got holes here, holes here, tapping, and then cutting. It's a drilling, tapping, cutting project. I wanted this to be non-welding. I didn't want any welding to have to do. One thing I do want to figure out is a better way to attach it. Um, because right now, so I've got these three quarter inch bolts on this tooling arm with the, with my flat platen. But when I get over my radius platen, I don't have those three quarter inch holes. Same thing with my contact wheels, or I mean rotary platen, my rotary platen. And then again, my small wheel holder, I don't have those holes. So I need to come up with a way, and I think what I might do, uh, I don't know, I might bring some plates out this way and that bolt onto everyone so that I can just loosen off a lever and they'll actually slide in and out super easy. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So basically there'll be a, a plate on the top, plate on the bottom, a plate right here. And so we'll basically have made like a smaller section of, actually you know what? I almost just put a, well basically made a smaller section of tubing here that this will slide in and out. And then I'm waiting for some more of these suckers to come in because these on uh, these locations, a few locations, probably like one here, one here, might want one here too. But that's just gonna make adjusting this so much easier, so much faster. And then also I could use one of those to kind of, you know, just have a clamp on this. Ex exact same thing as this, make kind of a box that just comes off of here down drill and tap a hole into the plate, that would be this plate, and that way, boom, we can slide this in, lock it down, and then when we don't want it, it's literally just popping off this lever, sliding the whole issue out, and then also taking this and moving it to other platens. I think that is gonna be a key to the ease of use of this system. I mean, I love the adjustability, now I just need to work on refining the ease of use. This was an easy project, I think it took like four hours to make this. But to get it refined and, and just a really great little thing, it's probably gonna, I'm probably gonna spend a few more weeks on it. Uh, primarily the reason for that is that, I mean, you know, I've gotta make knives and stuff for people. I can't just make tools for myself. You know, as knife makers, we're kind of forced to make a lot of our own tools, and that's handy, that's, that's wonderful. And when you kind of get good at making tools, or at least kind of have done a few, the challenge can be not to make too many tools because you can spend all day long making jigs, fixtures, tools, and not really actually make actual knives. I find that challenging sometimes. Also, one of the nice things with this type of a setup is that you can really kind of control the wear on your platen, right? Does that make sense? You know, you can grind down here, nice and low, so we can wear out this part of the platen. Once that part's all worn out, we can move it up here. We can be grinding at the top part here. So when you're doing your different flat grinds, you know, you can move it around, wear your platen more evenly. And then obviously, the big pro vantage. The real reason you'd wanna make one of these is for stuff, crazy stuff, like this. So check that out, that is pretty uh, pretty cool. I mean, we can go steeper than that. I'm not sure exactly what our our steepest angle is, but you know, if we're doing like swedges, stuff like that, uh, tanto tips, I can go quite a bit steeper than this actually. And to get full uh, adjustability and the full sharpness of angle, I actually do need to tilt my platen itself. But you know, for quick setups, especially once we get the levers in place of these nuts, this is gonna be so cool. And uh, as far as how rigid it is, I mean, like, yeah, it, it moves a bit, but really, there's it's it's gonna hold for what it's designed for. I mean, if you're using much more force than that when you're grinding, like, I'm pushing fairly hard on it, and there is deflection there, 
but you're not doing that when you're grinding, right? I mean, you're taking your material, you're coming in here and this is working it, and it's a fairly even steady pressure anyway. So absolutely one of the, one of the great comments I had. And one thing that I wondered when I was building this is, whoop, come on camera. How rigid is it going to be, right? Like that's what I'd wonder, but I'm absolutely really impressed uh, with this setup. And I think it just has to do with using thicker materials, nice meaty shafting in there, a good bite on all these joints, and it's just phenomenal uh, how versatile and adjustable this sucker is. Well, I better get on with my other projects. I've got a few other knives. Check out how camouflaged they are here after heat treat. I walk around, I'm like, where are my knives? Where are my knives? Where did I put them? Oh yeah, I put them right there. Slivers, I got a build video coming out on this one. Also probably a build video on this one. Tonto Chopper, Chanto. It's shaping up some handle scales for a father hunter. Uh, thing I like about screwing on handles is that you can take them off to shape them. So I just took a piece of mild steel in there to space everything and kind of keep everything tight together. And then I can, uh, you know, do my different grooves and, you know, start my Coke bottle profile, put my little thumb relief in there. And now I'm ready to just finish shaping the handle. So this will be, this should be done today. And then I think I'm going to do a gray kydex sheath for it. So I'm going to get cracking on with my other knife projects. And I just want to take this quick chance to kind of show you this thing, talk a little bit about it. And then when I get it all dialed in and like, you know, everything else finished up, I'll come address it again. I'll share it in another vlog, kind of showing you all this stuff. And uh, hopefully like the turnover, the adjustability will be much quicker. I'll show it in action too. Maybe I'll, I'll film some, some shots of me working on a knife. I'll throw that into the next video, but I just want to kind of share this with you guys. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Cheers.